cardiovascular system. You can follow along in your Desjardins book in chapter five. It'll help you fill in the gaps to some of the information that I am um, giving you. So it'll provide a little bit more detail. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the blood. So the blood is crucial to continue on and talk about the narrative we have or we have been talking about with our bodies able to exchange gases in the respiratory system and provide that much needed oxygen to all the tissues in our body. So once again, cells make up tissues, a group of tissues make up an organ and different organs make up an organ system. So, you know, it is crucial for our lungs to provide the needed oxygen. And they do that through ventilation and then gas diffusion. And then in order to con complete that process, we have to have a good amount of blood coming to that alveolar capillary membrane, picking up the oxygen, transporting that through our body. So we're going to talk about that process through the lens of the cardiovascular system today. So our blood contains three main types of formed elements, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. So the main function of the red blood cells is to transport our oxygen. So we have to have a good amount of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is uh, a portion of the red blood cell. If we have a low amount of red blood cells and therefore hemoglobin, it's called anemia. If we have a high amount due to your body chronically trying to produce more, um, in, usually in the presence of low oxygen, it's called polycythemia or too much. So white blood cells, of course, are here to uh, fight infection and protect our body against specific uh, pathogens. And then our platelets are involved in clotting. So <clears throat> there's different functions of the white blood cells, which is uh, called leukocytes. Uh, there's granulocytes and agranulocytes. So there's neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. And the difference between the granulocytes and the agranulocytes is how they're stained and really looked at microscopically. So neutrophils are the most numerous amount of cells. So neutrophils are also called polymorphic nuclei cells or lymphocyte cells, white blood cells. And that can be um, uh, shortened into something called PMNs. And that just means there's, when you do stain them microscopically, there's multinuclei. So these are the, the main fighters of our bodies. Uh, so when there is a, mainly a bacterial infection, it's the neutrophils that'll mount a very strong response. Uh, eosinophils are very important for Anti, releasing anti-inflammatory agents during a humoral uh, immune response. And of course, that's how um, the asthma immune response takes place. So when there is a really high antigen antibody immune response, such as with asthma, and then in some cases, you know, other lung diseases, such as COPD, um, there'll be a high eosinophil count, meaning it's trying to um, decre decrease a lot of that inflammation. Basophils are a very small amount um, and basophils um, help with releasing heparin and other anti-coagulation uh, properties. And then our lymphocytes and our monocytes. Lymphocytes are the second most common white blood cell and they're very important especially in viral attacks viral um, invasion so you might have heard of like the t cells or the t lymphocytes very important and then monocytes are the main um, eater of uh, different pathogens when it comes in so when anytime it comes into the body a lot of times in the lungs as well it'll go in and, and eat those different pathogens When we talk about the blood and clotting, it's really important, and we're going to hear these terms clinically, um, to look at different scenarios. 
So with normal blood flow, we can see going through our veins, our red blood cells are moving right through our vessels uh, in mainly our veins. And if you look here, there's little uh, valves that the red blood cells go through. There's also something called thrombosis and emboli. So if there is a clump, an extra um, um, clotting of blood, we call that thrombosis. And deep vein thrombosis generally starts in the leg or the hip area. And it's where um, there's, a, there's just a big blood clot. If one of those clots breaks through, it becomes an embolus. And this can be very dangerous because it's gonna go through the flow of blood. Um, it can get caught in the heart. Um, it can get caught in the coronary arteries. Um, commonly when we have a deep vein um, thrombosis and then it becomes an emboli, unfortunately, a lot of times it gets stuck in the pulmonary artery and then it becomes a pulmonary embolism. And then when blood goes through the pulmonary, goes into the pulmonary artery and goes through the pulmonary capillaries, it gets blocked. Well, of course that can be fatal because at that point, uh, blood flow can't go through the lungs and pick up the oxygen and, and, and release the carbon dioxide it needs to. So these terms are gonna be very important as we continue on. Okay, your blood plasma, um, plasma uh, is, is um, the main component of our blood um, and it contains uh, vital nutrients, it contains different ions, it contains waste products. Um, but it also, of course, contains the formed elements of the blood. So if we look at a blood sample and if we would take, send that to the lab and they would put it in a centrifuge, meaning if they took a little sample and, and spun it, it would separate the packed red blood cells from the blood plasma. Not necessarily separate them, but the red blood cells are heavier, so they would settle to the bottom. And if we look at a blood sample, we want to have at least 45% of that blood sample made up of packed red blood cells. Um, and that is called clinically a hematocrit level. So your hematocrit level is the amount of packed blood, red blood cells in a sample. So once again, we said that red blood cells are what carries oxygen. So if your hematocrit value is low um, and the normal value is around 45%, so 35 to 45%, if it's less than that, that's once again, anemia. And when we have anemia, our body has a really hard time uh, uh, transporting oxygen to the tissues. So there are different types of anemias. So um, anemia is defined as the deficiency of hemoglobin in the blood. So different types would be like an iron deficiency. Um, it can be a hemorrhagic anemia, meaning if you're bleeding out. Folate deficiency, um, hemolytic anemia is uh, when the red blood cells ruptured or are destroyed. Aplastic anemia is a hereditary disease where, um, or for some reason, the, the bone marrow doesn't make anemia. And then, of course, we have our sickle cell anemia, which is an autosomal recessive disorder. Um, sickle cell anemia is where um, the hemoglobins, instead of the nice bike or the red blood cells, instead of the nice biconcave discs, they're in a sickle shaped, um, which kind of looks like the end of a hockey stick. And in that case, it's just a lot harder to transport oxygen.